Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today, we'll be taking a dive through New Zealand's dark and tragic history. On this episode, we'll be talking about the first and only woman who was given the death penalty and actually executed for her crimes. A baby farmer, or what we now call foster parent, whose crimes were so atrocious and severe that she literally became part of our folklore. She was known as the South Island's boogeyman. Stories and poems were told to naughty children to scare them straight. You'd better be good or Minnie Dean will get you. Without any further ado, let's just jump right into the video. Wilhelmina McCulloch was born on the 2nd of September of 1844 in Scotland and she was mostly raised by her father who was a railway worker and this is because her mother was sick and slowly dying of cancer by the time that Minnie was 13 years old her mother passed away not much is known about Minnie's background aside from that but what we do know is that by 1860 she was already living in New Zealand in Invercargill we know that she came from Tasmania in Australia to live with her aunt and she had two daughters. She claimed to be a 16 year old widow, but there was no proof or record of her marriage. What probably happened was that her famous aunt was trying to cover it up so that Minnie could come to New Zealand and live in the colonies and reinvent herself. In her first years of being here in New Zealand, she thrived. She became a respected member of society. She was a teacher and a nanny. And soon after, she met Charles Dean, an innkeeper, who had a thriving business due to the gold rush. And they married in 1872. They were probably happy at this time with no concerns until the gold rush ended. Things began to change for Minnie and Charles. But by 1878, Charles had to give up his pub and become a farmer. Things didn't get better for them and they had to declare bankruptcy. Minnie had to knock on her aunt's door and ask for some money and they were able to buy a small farm. Just as Minnie thought that her life might start turning back for the better, things got worse for her. Her husband became an alcoholic with an ill temper and he was terrible with money. He was just throwing it away on the booze. Times got tough. Things got desperate and she was a woman trying to survive. So Minnie came up with a business idea. Now bear with me a little. This was a time where having children out of wedlock was the most shameful thing you could do. It could ruin your life. If you had a child out of wedlock, you would be disowned, you would become damaged goods. No one would want to marry you again. It was just the end of it all. So Minnie decided to post an anonymous ad on the paper. Respectable wife seeking to adopt child. What this ad created or what this ad opened was a door for unmarried mothers to take their children into Minnie's care for a small fee. Sometimes she would be paid a lump sum and sometimes she would be on a retainer of $25 or $10. This doesn't sound like a lot of money because it isn't. But to someone like Minnie, this is gold. So Minnie, probably excited that she was getting a paycheck for these unwanted children, her intentions probably good. Yeah, I'll raise them, I'll adopt them out. 
and I'll keep getting the money. So she kept advertising for more babies and she would emphasize country life. This is when she became a baby farmer. The parents with those advertisements would think fresh air, plenty of room to play, plenty of space for the carer to wait for the right adoptive parents to come and take a child of her hands. They were like, I'm sold. I'm taking my child over to Minis. But sadly, this was far from the truth. One major flaw in Minnie's business plan is that she didn't take into account that kids are expensive. Even in the 1800s, the little money that she was getting was not enough to raise healthy, happy kids. For starters, kids eat a lot, they get sick, and they need lots of love and attention. What Minnie didn't know is that she was creating her own hell on earth. Around 1890, the police started to become suspicious of Minnie and concerns were growing about the children being cared for at the Dean's house or as it was known at the time, the Larches. Especially because in 1889, a child died in her care. The police launched an inquiry and they went into her house to investigate and what they found was sickening. The children were being kept in disgusting conditions. The house was overcrowded with kids. They were neglected, malnourished, dirty. You just can't imagine like a horrible chicken coop with many, many little people. But the police gave Minnie the benefit of the doubt because they thought that children mortality rate was quite high at that time. And looking at the conditions, they probably thought that the child's death was accidental. Two years later, another baby died in her care, a six week old baby. And still, she claimed it was an accident. However, Despite the deaths of the children and the conditions that were frankly unlivable, she was still trying to make this work, you guys, and she was advertising for more babies. And it is also thought that she tried to take life insurance policies on these children. So what happened after those advertisements? Another flood of kids came into her care. I'm not sure what was going through Minnie's mind because frankly, I highly doubt that her husband was helping her raise these kids. He was a laborer by this point and I doubt that any money that he was making was helping to contribute to raise these children. So now let's fast forward to 1895. Police were now highly concerned about the children at the Dean's house. And this is because around this time, a lot of cases about notorious baby farmers were popping up all over the world, in Europe, in Australia, everywhere, where people were taking in kids, getting rid of them for money. So they decided to keep a close eye on her. And on the 2nd of May of 1895, it's where Minnie's downfall began. She was spotted by a reporter holding a little baby and a hat box. When she came back, she no longer had the baby, but just the hat box. And it was said that the hat box seemed unusually heavy. The reporter got so concerned that he called the police straight away. They tried to look for this baby and couldn't find it anywhere. So what did the police do? They went straight to the Dean's house and what they found confirmed their suspicions. They dug up the garden and found the body of the baby and two other babies next to it. 
even died of suffocation. Then there was Dorothy Carter, who died of an overdose. And the third baby, the cause of death was never determined. As you can imagine, tensions were running high and the public was outraged. The media was posting everywhere that this woman was a murderess, that she was killing these babies for profit. A woman named Jane Hornsby came forward and said that she visited the farm and inquired about a child that she had given Minnie to care for and that Minnie couldn't produce that child. So witnesses coming forward, papers and media everywhere, you can imagine this was the case of the century. What happened? Minnie was arrested and she was tried for four days. She did have a lawyer who claimed that the baby's deaths were accidental and that Minnie buried them in the garden and concealed their deaths because she wanted to avoid public scrutiny. Some people say that her demeanor was cold, but she always claimed her innocence right up to her death on the 12th of August, 1895. During her trial, Minnie always claimed that she did the best she could for these children. She said that five of them were in good health. She said that one was returned to the parents, six died of accidental causes, but she still couldn't account for the other 14 children that she cared for. After her hanging, this made the government look at the legislation because children were not really looked after. They were kind of seen as lower class citizens and they really didn't have any rights. So imagine the children that were not wanted by their parents. Must have been worse for them, right? So the government came up in 1893 with the Life Protection Act and in 1896 with the Infant Protection Act. And what this meant is that all children that were given into care, the care of someone needed to be registered. So they were not going to be little lambs that were lost and never and forgotten forever. They had to be recorded. As you can imagine, attitudes towards Minnie for a long time were that she was a cold-blooded murderer that killed babies for profit. But recently, the attitude towards her has slightly shifted. This is because some historians actually believe that she was in part innocent, that the deaths of these children were in fact accidental that she was a woman victim of her circumstances. They believed that she was desperate to survive and that she was trying to do the best that she could and she didn't realize that she was digging herself up into a hole. However, nevertheless, she still remains a complex and controversial character in our history. And the reason is that, that some people still believe she was guilty of her crimes. I mean, she, she after the first couple of deaths and the overcrowding, she could have stopped asking for more children, but she didn't. She continued to do this. If it wasn't for the police, she would continue to do that forever. So I'm not sure where I am on this one, you guys. Maybe she was desperate. Maybe she couldn't take it anymore. Maybe she had too many kids and tried to get rid of some of them and thought that no one would notice because they were unwanted. And this would free up more room for more babies, more money. Or maybe it was a bit of everything. At the end of the day, she did ask for more babies when she couldn't maintain the ones that she had. 
whatever her state of mind was, she was guilty of that. And with that thought, I'll leave it up to you guys. What do you guys think about this one? Have you heard about many? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, thank you for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.